does anyone from the committee have any questions that they would like to ask? Yeah. Frida? I'd uh, like to know from Spectra at several meetings, we have asked Spectra how they are working with the Department of Sanitation of New York, which also occupies that peninsula, and how they plan to work with them in the future. Uh, they. The answer that we've gotten in the past is not satisfactory. It's we're talking with them. I want to know what the results of the talking with them are. Should we talk weekly? There's weekly meetings between sanitation and spectra on where everybody's working, make sure we don't interfere with their operation. They don't, you know, we're, so that we're as coexistent as possible. There's been a lot of cooperation on both sides, as you heard from Ed Gonzalez's presentation. We're virtually done with a lot of the installation. We will be back next year for that 300 foot piece connecting from the river to 9A. So we've been working with sanitation, and that's pretty much how it's gone. And I don't think, you know, they don't love having us, but there's no complaints. Uh, can I yeah, ask ahead. one short one of Con Ed? Have you calculated how much of this gas? will actually be used in New York City. Uh, and if not all of it, uh, what's to happen with the remainder? Is there storage planned or export? Export? No. Export. Not, no export. 100% of the gas will be used within Con Edison service territory. 100%. You have calculated that all the gas that will be coming in under pressure in this 30 inch pipeline will be used in the confines of New York City? When you say New York City, you mean the five boroughs? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That is New York City. Ellen? Yeah. <laughs> um, in holding up Con Edison's uh, uh, picture there, what concerns me is that where the line, where the pipeline is going to connect to the 15th Street transmission station, that all of those uh, lots in the latter part of the 19th, uh, 20th century were filled in water lots. And my question to you is the stability of the lot and what is the water table? Uh. I'm not sure what the water table is, but that line was installed in 2004, and we did not have a problem. It was part of a project uh, over five miles that we installed in Manhattan back in 2004. So in terms of the water table, uh, the condition of the water lots and everything else, uh, we had no issues back then that I was aware of. 2012. Anyone else? Go ahead, yeah. yeah, didn't get an answer, uh, but that's okay. So we've all just emerged from this uh, really extraordinary, catastrophic storm. Uh, the head of your uh, Con Ed planning for storm surges and events, Carlos Torres, was talking to a group of us at the New York Bar Association, and he said that uh, we would it is necessary to plan for continuously higher storm surges that we are not going to be like, oh good, this is over now, it's not going to happen anymore. So, and he talked about one of the strategies that they will adopt is to raise the uh, equipment and uh, uh, above what they anticipate the storm surge to be. So. Uh, I mean, we know what's happened with undergrounded uh, equipment uh, caught in the storm surge. So uh, with that in mind, uh, looking at what happened with the 14th Street substation <coughs> explosion, <laughs> that was, you know, really big. Uh, and then thinking about the San Bruno explosion, which was only a little over a year ago, which took out 38 houses and killed eight people <coughs> in San Bruno, California. Uh, how can, well, let me put it another way. Uh, 
our community has the responsibility to view this proposal from that perspective. And we can't, uh, how can you protect your equipment from any water? Like for instance, the ROV, the remotely operating valve, that's electric, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it involves electricity, mm -hmm. right? Anything remote, right? Okay, so then if you have a salt water surge coming into that electrically operated equipment and it causes even a little explosion just because it doesn't like the salt water, then you can have an enormous explosion much greater than San Bruno and with our children's playground right down the road, you know? Uh, <coughs> How can this work? How can we say, oh, you know, this will be okay? Okay. I think there was a couple of questions there. <laughs> First, with the storm surge, uh, the gas system did not experience any real negative impact from the storm surge. What you were talking about is really the electric. Yes. Uh, all our existing ROVs remain in operation uh, with battery. We have bat electric and battery backup, so they were all in operation and that they remained in operation throughout the storm. So then how okay, did you so the, handle uh, the electric part of that in the middle of the storm surge? With the battery backups. So are you we saying have, that the battery backups will not cause any explosions? Correct. Correct. And and then how do you do that? I mean, you turn it on when you see, and also how long does it last? The batteries don't last for days. Mm -hmm. They do last for days. Oh, that's not very okay. Long. Well, we, we yeah. have plenty of time to change them, and you know, I think on average they're about a week. Okay. okay. So, so so all right. Now we are talking about uh, one thing: the remotely operated valves. Presumably, there will be a lot of other electrical operations involved in the system uh, to operate it, right? No. no. It's a hydraulic system. There is, other than the ROVs, there's nothing else the that is, is electric. The monitoring is, is telecommunications. That's electric. Well, it's the phones. Yes. So that doesn't have any. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, so to go back to what Carlos Torres said, yeah. uh, and you know, his job uh, actually is to uh, do the strategy for Con Ed in this new circumstance that we are dealing with, and we now know we are dealing with. And also, his job before that was construction. So he's a very impressive guy, and uh, he was saying that this that the equipment has to be raised. I don't understand why, since you're, you're doing this now, it's all new, it could be done another way, why it can't be raised. I think call, what Carlos meant, all the transformers and all the electrical equipment that's above ground in, the, in uh, at East River, that is what he was addressing. He's, I don't think he was addressing the infrastructure in the streets because it would, you know, especially for the electric transformers and the steam system and the uh, gas system, to put everything above ground would be uh, impractical. No, but you know, the, the three-inch pipeline, yes. uh, high pressure transmission pipeline is a whole other kettle of fish from the normal distribution gas line. And, I mean, that's why San Bruno exploded. No, San Bruno exploded because they used improper material. Okay, okay. Con Edison has been, in, has been a gas company for 180 years. San Bruno and exploded And we've had an, an impressive safety company. record for, for that time. We've had some incidents, and whenever they, we do have something, we look for the root cause, and we mitigate it and prevent it from happening again. Not in Except, that same yeah, spot, but maybe somewhere else. You do have incidents in New York City of explosions <laughs> for lot. all your safety precautions. The manhole covers flying yeah. off of Con Edison. <coughs> Those aren't gas. Yes. Those are, that's steam. electric incidents. And steam. It is Con Edison. And the explosions on 15th Street, what were they? There were three explosions in the last year and a half on 15th Street between 10th Avenue 
And, uh, is that your so question, Jim? Like, no, it's not my question. Okay. So we, we're, we're going to no, have time to ask questions. Okay. And we didn't go on to 15th Street exposure. Right. So, so <laughs> let, let, Ann, let Ann finish. Okay. So uh, the San Francisco Examiner reported not too long ago mm -hmm. that they discovered that the wells uh, on the San Bruno PG and E pipeline, a lot of them were horizontal along the length of the pipe, uh, which was deemed really hazardous. And the, the guarantees that PG&E had undertaken <laughs> were completely different from what they built. Now, energy companies don't have a very good track record. Mm -hmm. and, and we're being asked to trust you guys with the lives of our neighbor. So, I don't feel, personally, I, I really don't feel comfortable with this at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The, San, the pipe in San Bruno, you're right, it was longitudinally welded. Yes. But it was only welded on the top. It wasn't welded on the inside. That it was defective pipe that should never have been put, used on a gas system. That was the root cause of the San Bruno incident. Yeah. And so how would something like that happen and, and not be acknowledged in any way until an explosion caused them to look a little harder? I really can't speak for them. All I can say is what Con Edison does, the material we use, we have certified uh, inspectors go to where the, the mills, where the steel is being made, inspected. We have the PSE witness hydrostatic test of one and a half times of the maximum allowable operating pressure of the pipe that will prove that whatever the wells that are 100% x-rayed and the pipe itself can withstand the internal pressure of the pipe. The part of the problem is that it isn't just you, it's Spectra. I mean, it's Spectra joining uh, up with you. Mm -hmm. FERC is the only oversight with with Spectra, and FERC is overseen by nobody. Mm -hmm. You have to take them to court to get, to get any kind of oversight. I mean, that's horrendous. All right. Some clarification. Yeah. You say you have inspectors. Are they independent inspectors, or do you pay these inspectors? They're Con Edison employees. Okay. Now, I want to get everybody to have an opportunity to ask questions. I, I think we could start from one side of the room and move on the way over, okay? Um, seems like a simple way. Ma'am, would you like to ask questions? Yes. You know what? I, I have a feeling you're going to have to be a little bit louder to, okay, to project uh, all the way over to this one. And, and you know what? It would be great if there's a question for Spectra or a question for Con Ed. This is Con Ed. Con Ed question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure, and sure, the upper stand up. Okay. In the East End, 220 East End Avenue, <laughs> and 90th Street during Sandy was flooded four feet of water from the East River. The next day, there was an electrical explosion in the street, and um, Con Ed turned off the gas to the building, which had to be evacuated, at 220 East End Avenue. To this day, there is still no gas in that building. And I think, you know, why would you need to turn off the gas to that building if electrical explosions have no relationship to the gas pipelines. Mm. Good question. I don't know the specific incident with this uh, building, but 99% of the time the fire department requests the gas to be turned off, Why? and if there's flooding in the basement, the fire department would definitely want the uh, gas to be turned off for safety reasons. So the gas is ready to be turned on once the building meets the city's requirements and is uh, proven that everything is up to snuff and then we are ready to turn it on. There isn't one structure on the Con Edison system from uh, the storm that we're not ready to reintroduce gas to. It's all on the customer's side, the building on the side. Um, the basement is dry now and it's been dry for a while and there's still no gas. Once the city approves it, we will 
you know, we cannot just go and turn it on without it being inspected and tested. Do you have a question, sir? Uh, yeah. No, you're, you're, you're right yeah. Now. Jeremy Alderson from the NOFRAC Almanac newspaper. Uh, two quick questions for is it Mr. Gonzalez from Spectra. Uh, one, there's a pipe, the green pipe. We were at the site today coming up uh, out of the water at that site. Is that the Spectra pipeline? At the uh, exit point where the pipe comes on to uh, uh, the Gansport Peninsula area, the initial joint that you see is, is what we call the, the sacrificial joint, the initial joint that runs through the hole. What we'll be doing is cutting that off, and the, the physical pipe that will stay there is, is further behind that. So that's not the pipe, that's the precursor to the pipe. Correct. Okay, second quick question. Would it be fair to assume, correct me if I'm wrong, whatever anybody <laughs> thinks of it, that the level of confidence and professionalism which the Spectre personnel have performed with in informing the public at that this meeting is equivalent to, to the level of professionalism and competence with which Spectre will install the pipeline. <laughs> For us as a company, we are very diligent in what we do and how we do it. We feel we've done a very good job in the initial communication of the project through the permitting stages no. and as we continue through that and into our construction. Oh, no. but you're saying that you are a representative of Spectra and you're at the same level of professionalism as the people who will be ensuring the safety of New York City in the installation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Ma'am, in the back there, with the glasses. This is for both Con Ed and, and Spectra. Do you have a disaster plan? Say if the pipeline underneath the Hudson explodes exactly. or anything like that, you have a disaster plan. Bravo. Yeah, for, for Spectra, we have an emergency response plan. Uh, what we've done is we've sat down with the various entities uh, in New Jersey as well as New York, um, Office of Emergency Management, uh, police and fire department uh, to go through how the pipeline is operated, how is it maintained, and if an event would occur with the pipeline, uh, how the reaction would occur from uh, those different entities as well as our staff to respond to the location. So yes, there is a plan out there that we've developed. We've reviewed with them. Uh, what we're going to be doing is having the ongoing dialogue uh, with those entities the before the pipeline goes into service. Yeah, can you tell us about the plan? Yeah, we need to know. Transparency. <laughs> yeah, as far as the... Yeah. Everything you know, we, we'll, we'd like to hear right now, whatever you know, whatever off the top of your head you know about it. Well, what, what it goes through is, is for the pipeline is we as a company with our staff, we operate the valves because our individuals are we're experienced. We're talking about our, like, emergency... Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. What, what we do is we don't want the emergency <laughs> responders going out and and, uh, and turning the valves and operating our facility. What we will do is our own company people will do that. The reason Where are they is located? they understand how it works and how it's going to be placed in, in, in service. Our folks are, are uh, placed in New Jersey just on the opposite side of the river and what we're working on now is how the staffing will be placed and coordinating the work here in Manhattan. You heard that answer that you just gave, right? Yes, and okay. what we're doing is the staffing will be placed appropriately to deal with that. What's appropriate? And, and, and you know, I didn't mean to cut you off, but... Um, there you are. He's being so... Excuse me. Okay, excuse me. thank you. Uh, Maybe you uh, my my suggestion, my suggestion... Can you play this role? My suggestion. If you have a question and you don't feel like it's being answered, okay, that you put it down on a piece of paper, okay, and you email it. To the too much. Okay. Then, then, then you don't yeah. take my suggestion. Can you play this role okay. of helping him clarify what we clearly don't understand or what is right, too We're going to ask a question on this side dead. over here. This is a public no. meeting to educate the public. I just want to go back and keep it simple. Uh, Alexander Meadows, I'm on this committee, and this is for Con Ed and Spectra. You've told us everything that would work and everything that wouldn't work in a contingent plan. Put yourself in our shoes and without being evasive and without saying there is no problem, explain to us, if you lived in this neighborhood, why you would not put this pipeline in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that's for Con Edison and Spectra. Go first. Uh, I've been doing this for 26 years. Con Edison has been in the gas business for 180 years. 
I would have no problems living next to a gas transmission line, all right, personally, because I know how it's constructed. I know the safeguard put into the construction and the design of it. And there's human error. Without a doubt, but a lot of the design uh, takes into it out of account. Part of what we do, by law, this isn't even considered a transmission pipe. This is considered a distribution pipe. But because mm -hmm. I was told not to get into engineering technicalities, this pipe, because of the pressure it operates and the way it's designed, is actually considered a distribution pipe. Can you but say a little more about that? I'm sorry for jumping in, okay. so that we understand uh, this distinction. The federal definition of transmission pipe is that it has to operate above 20% of specified minimum yield strength. Okay, and the specified minimum yield strength has to do with the pressure and design of the pipe. So this would operate below that. And would Spectra answer that question? Hopefully without help of your attorney. But it seems yeah, as far as, you know, the facilities, I like Tony, I live next to three natural gas pipelines, large diameter, larger than this, 36 and 42 inch diameter. I've done this for well over 30 years. I understand the process of what goes on when you design a facility. I understand what the operation and maintenance are that various owner and operators do for interstate natural gas pipelines. You know, for me, this is what I do. This, this, is, this is something that, that, that I am responsible for in, in, in my profession. And I understand the process of what goes on. I'm very confident in the way that this pipeline is going to be, is, has been designed, and how it's being constructed and the safeguards. I mean, there's multiple, multiple levels of safeguards that we put into a facility to deal with the potential what ifs if something happens. So there's redundancy built in the system. So I'm confident in what we're doing and that the pipeline is safe to be sided here. I, I have a question, at least in terms of Con Ed. In terms of the pipe uh, and, and where it's headed, um, is there any substations? Is there any storage tanks? Is, is there anything? Uh, I guess what I'm trying to find out is where does the, where does the, uh, the tube actually connect to uh, at the very end? In other words, tube starts here, 14th Street goes up 10th Avenue to uh, 17th Street. The way, where, where does it go from there? And, and is there any sort of substations or anything like that or, or gas facilities? The only gas facility we have is in Astoria. We do have one gas facility in Astoria. Uh, but other than that, the way gas works is it goes into the transmission system and then from there, we have what's called regulators that step down the pressure and goes right into the distribution system. So it doesn't necessarily have to travel any distance at all. It just goes to a regulator, cuts it down to pressure, goes into, into the 4,300 miles of distribution pipe, and then it goes to the customer. Sir, you have a question? Yeah, I, I want to, uh, um, this is about the regulator vault system, actually. So. Uh, uh, I, I didn't catch your name from Con Ed. What's your name? Anthony Levi. Anthony. My name's Dave. Um, I, I actually have a, a couple of quick questions, so if we can get a back and forth, that would be great. Um, and I, I'm asking you this basically in the context of, uh, of Breezy Point, because none of us want to have anything like that happen in this neighborhood. So the regulator vaults, um, that's basically a, a, an area so that uh, a, a pipeline that can handle, let's say, 300 PSI can come in and then uh, that can be distributed down to a level where uh, pipelines that can only handle 10 PSI, that they, they can handle that gas. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So um, I've read a lot about the uh, regulator vaults, and there's indications. Uh, one source is this guy, Mark McDonald, from the New England Gas Workers Association, and he's stating that um, flooding can impair those regulator vaults' ability to close down. Um, mm -hmm. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am aware of it, but our, the way our system is designed, they can work 100% on the water because they're gas tight. They don't rely on uh, equipment probably that they're using. Okay. Uh, are you aware that in the Con Ed gas long range plan 2010 to 2030, they cite the uh, flooding of regulator uh, vaults as being a potential uh, problem? Are you aware of that? Uh, the flooding of regulator vaults in that plan had primarily to do with the old equipment that is no longer in service. Okay. Are you 100% sure of that? So, 100%. I, I mean, that, that's, that's a very recent, uh, uh, 2010 to 2030, that seems like a very recent report. This, this, is, this whole system has changed over since that point in terms of the type of regulator vaults that are used? No. It, it, it has to do with the pilots that are used and operating, you know, because the regulators, the whole system uses uh, it's a two-stage for the cuts with overpressure protection, 
and the pilots that are used uh, are such that they're not uh, adversely affected by uh, flooding. Can I finish my questions? Okay, so the regulator vaults that we're talking about in your system, those are all going to be underground, is that correct? First of all, for this project, we have no regulators being installed. It's a valve, okay? Regulators, we have, uh, I want to think, a few hundred regulators throughout our system, but on this project, we're not installing a regulator uh, right now. So what is going to convert that, you know, that high-pressure pipeline to the low-pressure pipeline? It goes into the, it connects to the rest of the pipe, and it goes into our system. Mm. There's no buffer? That's Are you saying there's no buffer? Mm. Buffer for what? From 300 PSI to 10 PSI. There is. We have other regulators throughout Manhattan. That, that's where the gas is going to go to. And those we don't need one ground. for this one 1,500 feet of pipe. But those regulator vaults are on the ground, is that Yes, all of them. Okay. Um, are you aware of the suits by uh, New Jersey Natural Gas versus the town of Red Banks uh, regarding underground regulator vaults? No, I'm not. Okay, well, in that suit, they're apparently stating that, uh, see, the, the, the town of Red Banks wants to have this thing underground because they feel that it's more aesthetically uh, appealing, and the uh, New Jersey Natural Gas Company, they uh, feel that that's actually a public health hazard. Um, and so that seems a curious sort of thing that, uh, that you know, one company wants to have it above ground, the other one is perfectly happy having them below ground, and the one where it's below ground happens to be one of the most densely populated areas on the planet. And then the last thing that I'm wondering about is uh, in terms of environmental impact statements um, for this, uh, it, my impression is that Con Ed does not have to do an environmental impact statement for things that they're installing below ground, but they would if they were doing it above. Is that correct? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, my mental impact statement is usually a, uh, a FERC requirement. Have you, has, has Con Ed done any sort of environmental impact statement for the uh, work that's going to be doing in this neighborhood? No. I'm sorry? No, no we get the uh, DLT permits and the city steps to do our work. Do you, do you have a question, ma'am? I think you. Did you have a question? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I, I find it a little curious that the police are here at, at a peaceful democratic yeah. process, but I guess they're here to witness the crime of the pipeline. So thank you for being here. For Thanks, that. Marty. I'm glad you know. Thanks, what's Marty. Going on. Um, but I just wanted to address some of the safety regulations that you've been talking about. Um, the Spectra has been cited by the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety and Administration for 17 inadequacies in its pipeline safety operations, such as surveillance, emergency plans, welding, welding procedures, including failure to describe the communications process with fire, police, and public officials during an emergency, failing to define conditions deeming a pipeline unsafe, in 2010, Spectra Energy was rated number one greenhouse gas polluter in British Columbia, number seven on US EPA's top civic penalty ranking for toxic PCB pollution. So why, how can you promise us that you will have these safety precautions in place? And why are you not required to have an environmental impact statement? Can we have more clarity on that, please? Spectra? <coughs> For Spectra Energy, there is a uh, environmental impact statement that was done for our project. Uh, if I completed that, um, March or April, early, early part of this year. Uh, it's available on our website, the yesgaspipeline.org. It's enormous. Yeah. Is it? Can you repeat that, please? Sorry. I'm sorry. What about the 17 violations? Can you respond to the safety questions that she raised? Please? <laughs> and, and I'm sorry, your questions on the safety were? I didn't hear any questions. How, well, it's, it's, I mean, it's a very broader question, I mean, but I really wanted um, Con Ed, sorry, to speak to the environmental impact statement. Yes. Okay, we're regulated by the New York State Public Service Commission, and they don't require one. <laughs> Okay. Do you have a question? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. He, he, but the Spectre guy never addressed the, the, the safety questions that, that, exactly. that she brought up. Like all, all those safety violations, can you address those? Well, How do we know that you're not going to violate them here? Yeah, as, as far as we I don't think, no, we can't know. As far as what, what I believe you were you were just citing, it was a, a notice of amendment 
that uh, USDOT cited us for and what it was is we needed to go through and make modifications to our standard operating procedures for our facilities. At no time were we in violation of being able to safely operate our pipeline. And part of what the FEMSA process in USDOT is, is they go through and they perform inspections on us. Uh, you know, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission that was described earlier and we talked about, that's the lead agency for us to permit the project. And we describe to them how we're going to build the facility. <coughs> but as I had in my presentation, we're building our facility in compliance with USDOT, Part 192, it's a federal code. USDOT is the entity that does oversight of our facilities. As far as the design, how do we design it in meeting code? How are we constructing it? Are we constructing it in compliance with what we defined in our specifications and the drawings? And then once the pipeline is completed, are we operating and maintaining that facility for those requirements that we defined? USDOT has come out several times. We've met with them multiple times already on the project in the design stages explaining to them what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. They've come out several times and have inspected the construction aspects of the project, and they're going to continue to do so. For, for us, it's an ongoing process in ensuring the safety of our facilities and the redundancy. I think that's the important part, is there's layers and layers of safety that we build into this. We just don't go buy a piece of pipe from the shelf. Some companies do that, and that's acceptable. It meets their requirements, and it meets code. For us, we don't. We look at redundancy in the system. So what we do is, I explained the citation. The the issue is is that is a, is you ask about why and why we feel that we can build this pipeline safely and operate it safely. It is the redundancy. Has they retracted those concerns and those those 17 inadequacies? Then yeah, we filed uh, our response to them, and the record was closed. Do you have a question in the back there with Glass? Yes, uh, Street resident, I wanted to say first of all, I appreciate the work of, of, of uh, this committee over several years with respect to fracking and the full board. Very, very good. Uh, there, there are a lot of us who are not going to go away and the number is going to be stronger who coming on this whole issue and we appreciate the work on this pipeline. I have two questions. One for this gentleman from Spectra and one for the gentleman from Con Ed. First of all, this question of the EIS, those of us who followed the FERC EIS process uh, recognize that, that this pipe, uh, FERC has a requirement for an EIS, which it did, which it, those of us who read it realized that it was kind of perfunctory in a sense, but once that pipe left, FERC stopped its jurisdiction, then the EIS wasn't required by Con Ed. And now the question I have is how did, between Spectra and Con Ed, this decision made to stop a 30-inch pipe right across the highway where, and by the way, FERC has never dealt with an EIS with buildings that are taller than three or four stories. Mm -hmm. So this is an enormous density, but if that, if the, we took, stopped a 30-inch pipe, and we started a 30-inch pipe that goes 1,500 feet further up, and so I, my question for Spectra is, is how was that decision made to stop that pipe where it was instead of taking it to 1,500 feet and giving it to Con Ed there. That's question number one. And for the uh, Con Ed, this issue about capacity and using 100% of this pipe okay. in New York City, in the FERC EIS, there was a request for only 20%. Con Ed signed on for 20% of this pipe, 80% Chesapeake and uh, Statoil took. Now, when you answered uh, the question from the committee that 100% of this gas is going to be used by Con Ed in New York City, uh, that, you know, I, I wonder if it's going up to Westchester. I mean, your Con Ed system went well beyond the confines of New York City. So I do find, I just want to get a, you know, is that correct? Uh, Con Edison has 10 additional uh, supply points coming into our system. Uh, we have four, five, six, seven of them in Westchester, okay? We have one uh, in the Bronx and two others in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So the, the ones that are in Westchester are sufficient to handle that load. The one in the Bronx is right on the border of where the pipe would uh, trans goes from the city to Westchester. But the so, issue about when this pipe is connected one year from now, you're, you're using 100% of this gas coming in in New York City. 
the gas will be used by Con Edison customers. Con Edison transports the gas. We do not, we only supply like 50% of the gas that, that is being used. People, supply, uh, customers are allowed to purchase their own gas and have it transported. Okay. Which customers outside of New York City? So, okay. Clarification. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no, no. Go ahead. One, one last point. The point I want to make is that uh, one of the issues that many people who have been looking at this for years believe firmly is that Plan YC under Bloomberg was written before we knew about shale gas right. and radon, and there was a big push yeah. for gas. And we've got to undo that misunderstanding now. And we, unfortunately, we have a city council president who's not listening clearly. So that's we're going to be pushing back against this fight. We're not going away. Please, one point of information. Yeah, just in terms of following up on that on that question, Kim, you said that some of the gas goes up to Westchester. Okay. The question is. When you say only Connect customers, what are the Connect customers? What, what's the region that you're talking about? This gas physically will not make it into Westchester. Okay, It'll, it will be used, utilized in the city. What I was talking about with the, with the gas, people, customers can buy their own gas from the well, have it transported, and they pay pipelines, they pay Con Edison to transport that gas water. Is the gas for sale outside of New York City? But that doesn't have anything to do with this pipeline, is what you're saying, is that correct? It can, yes. That's why Stan Oil and Constellation, right, they are shippers. All right, so, so they will sell gas to customers on, on Con Edison's system. We don't sell the, the commodity. We transport it. Uh, you have a question? For the question. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. What specific? Uh, Becker didn't answer his question. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> what specific well, process was it? Didn't get I'm, I'm interrupting my wife. Spectra did not answer the question about the EIS the segmentation. So that EIS study. The question was. Was was what happened to stop a 30 inch pipe 600 feet or 300 feet into the city and then we run it 1500 feet where it doesn't have to have that EIS that would yeah. be required if it was right. all under first control? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as how we came up with the location where we would terminate our facility, we wanted to come up with a very specific location where we would build our facility into Manhattan and terminate it. From there, then Con Ed would have the ability to determine how and which route they would connect to their facility. They have a better appreciation of their existing transmission system that's in Manhattan versus us trying to run the line to connect to some arbitrary point. So we picked a, a point within Manhattan that, that was um, a suitable location from a Con Ed perspective as well. So from there, they could come up with an alignment of designing their facility to tie into their existing infrastructure. It only well, would have EIS. taken one question to Con Ed. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, you have a question? Yeah, the, 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 the other part of the question is, well, why wasn't the 1,500 feet included into the FERC uh, uh, FEIS? And the reason is uh, ours is interstate uh, natural gas pipelines, Con Ed is intrastate. And it's non-jurisdictional uh, facilities uh, for FERC to take into account when they do uh, the FEIS. What does that mean? What specific process is going to be implemented in the direct assessment of the radon 222 that's going to be entering uh, the New York City pipelines from the Marcellus Shale? Uh, what specific processes are you going to uh, implement to uh, assess how much radiation is going to be coming into the city of New York. And how about the pipes, uh, could you, uh, and this, this is addressed to Con Edison as well as, uh, as uh, uh, Spectra. Spectra. And uh, we want to, basically we want to know what the process is for that and how often it's going to take place. And what you're going to do with the hot pipes once the infrastructure becomes scaled with radiation. What, what processes have you implemented, if any, to, uh, to address that issue of radiation, especially radon-222? Right Thank you. 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 Thank you.
12-step program. Yes, I am a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Patrick Kester, Minion House Counsel with Spectre Energy. Uh, let me just say the raid on issue has been <coughs> extensively documented in the FERC process. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of pages okay, in the record about the raid on and and not in the EIS. Could you be more specific? For, for, yes, FERC addressed it in the EIS. No. No, it was it's not in the That's EIS. Not. It's, it's not in the EIS, which is why, one of the reasons why I'm asking that question. Okay, in that case, that in that case, case, I'd just like to reference you to section 4.11.1.5 in the FEIS. Would you say that again, please? Say that again. Section 4.11.1.5. Is that where it says that this is the state's problem and it's not within the jurisdiction of the... I don't believe that's what the FEIS says. What does it say? Tell us what the FEIS says. Share it with us. Okay, I will. Thanks. This was, the issue was raised in the FEIS. A number of parties brought the issue up on rehearing. FERC addressed it again in rehearing. FERC's conclusion in both the FEIS and on rehearing was that the project's potential transportation of Marcella source gas will not pose a health hazard to end users. Oh, that, that's, that's the 100,000 page. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the conclusion. That's the conclusion. You said it was hundreds of thousands of studies. Excuse me, excuse me. That's not an answer. There are a lot of, oh. are a lot of conflicting uh, opinions to that particular issue. Right. And there the, there the, are the a the number tests, of studies. Excuse me, sir. Let sure. me finish my statement. The fact of the matter is the tests were not conclusive on any number of wells, especially high producing wells, that would per perhaps exhibit a high <coughs> level of norm. And I think that it's a, a process that should be addressed and that hasn't been addressed. And to take safe wells and to base your studies, so-called studies, on any kind of safe well doesn't constitute a pro, uh, an efficient uh, resolution to this particular issue. There should be there should be more of a conclusive uh, uh, a, a, a evidence. statement evidence of this particular issue, and it has not been addressed. It has been shoved under the carpet, and no nobody in this room has any answer, as <coughs> well as yourselves, has any answer to this particular issue of radon two twenty two. Which, if was if Definitely. it was studied yeah. and confirmed the high levels of radiation in many of these high-producing wells, this would this whole operation would be shut down, and we all know that. You're, you're basically taking the issue, and we're looking at the issue from a standpoint of let's do the study from low-producing wells, from wells that do not have that have been drilled, knowing that there isn't a high level of radiation, using that as the basis. Mm -hmm for your particular uh, answers, for your particular facts to, for this EIS, and you're basically stating that it is of no consequence, which is, if you look back in the EIS, you will notice, you will read, it is of no consequence. That's a quote. Repeatedly. So my dear sir, it is not 1,500 pages that you have, many hundreds of pages you have focused on this particular issue. It is one line that you have focused on this issue. How would you address that in terms of going back and doing a study on high producing wells and the issue of radon 222 coming into New York City and producing lung cancer in many hundreds of thousands of people? Every single kitchen, every single appliance that uses gas, including hotels, restaurants, every kitchen, Every single thing that uses gas, every person is at risk with this level of radon 222 that has an extremely high potential for disease. So I'd like for you to go back and address that to the people that are looking at this issue and say, we're, we're, we're safe. We don't have to deal with that anymore. What's your response to that? And that's to address to Spectra as well as <coughs> Con Edison, Mr. Gonzalez. I'd like to hear your take on that. I want to know what you're doing with the direct assessment and how often you're going to assess for radon-222 just, just to completely make you understand what the question is in terms of direct assessment 
how often and what are you going to do to test for radon 222 that's going to be coming into New York City. There will not be any particular way to, to state how much is, of Marcellus is going to be coming in. But considering we're the closest end user, we're the closest end user to the Marcellus shale, mm -hmm. this particular pipeline is the main focus for bringing it into the city because we're the, we're, the, we're the closest end user is the cheapest delivery charge. So I'd like to hear a couple of answers from both of you fellas. Yeah, go ahead. First of all, both the U.S. EPA and U.S. Department of Energy have looked at this issue. Not, they, that means they hundreds, hundreds, let them finish. Let them finish. He's going to answer the question. You may not like the results, but they've done hundreds of tests. You don't like the results because they're biased. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. I don't like the results because they don't reflect Excuse me. Exactly Excuse me. Excuse me. The question was asked. Let them answer, okay. please. <laughs> Spectra Energy also hired its own independent expert to take a look at this and did actual testing on the wells that are producing in Pennsylvania. The results of those tests were consistent with the levels of radon found by both EPA and DOE. Since that time, since that time, the U.S. Geological Survey has done tests of wells in Pennsylvania. Same levels of radon consistent with Spectra studies, U.S. EPA studies, U.S. DOE studies. And what those studies find is that the amount of radon that comes into a home through the use of natural gas is about one four hundred. That's one four hundred of the amount of radon in background air in those residences. Those no, are the facts. Not, it's not <laughs> so, the facts. Do you, uh, <laughs> do you want to There's nothing respond natural about natural <laughs> gas. Either. Stop saying my word. <laughs> uh, basically, to his point, uh, the transportation of natural gas is a federal. Uh, it comes under the FERC. Uh, FERC has made its ruling right, wrong, or indifferent. Uh, Con Edison has to abide by that ruling. If they should change their position in any way and impose regulations, Con Edison would follow them. We're going to, sir, you need a chance. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, just to follow up with your thing, but I'll point out that there's no environmental impact statement done within the state jurisdiction. You said that yourself. The other thing I heard from you is that the fire department doesn't like it when uh, gas facilities are are submerged. So notwithstanding your statement that it's per perfectly safe, here we have a facility that's proximate, you know, that, that essentially was flooded, would have been flooded if it existed just a, a month ago, and that's going to happen again and again, especially since this particular fuel contributes to the very uh, climate change that, that brought on that, that storm. But my question to you is, can you explain the thought process uh, among PSC and Con Ed to locate this you know, major distribution pipeline, which I believe somewhere in the, in, the, in, the, in the FERC filings of Spectra, it was pointed out that most of the safety violations on, on pipelines are in the local distribution network. So that would be, for example, what we're talking about here. What was the thought process of putting that pipeline uh, at those pressures, not only near all these people, which I guess is no choice, it's New York City from your perspective, but you know, a couple hundred feet from 50% of New York City's maritime firefighting capability which would be very much required should there be an incident at that location. Mm -hmm. You basically be knocking out mm -hmm. yeah. the means, just as, just as in Fukushima, you have the means for backup and mitigation of the earthquake were wiped out by the very incident that you know, violated their assumptions. Right. Uh, likewise here we have something where it seems bizarre to me that you would jeopardize 50% you know, of New York City's maritime fire pipe, fire freight capability, which New York City itself is represented as being a very important asset when another, another disaster happened about you know, you know, 12, 11 years ago. Thank you. First, let me address the equipment that was underwater is uh, customer-owned equipment in flooded basements. That's why the fire department requires uh, and requests the gas to be turned off for an unsafe condition. In terms of the location, uh, like you mentioned, you met uh, Carlos Torres, our vice president yes. of emergency management. He, uh, through our emergency plan, is in constant contact with OEM and the fire chiefs and the fire battalions. We do training with them. They are fully aware of this pipeline. They are fully aware of where it's located. The, the, apparently, they apparently are, the rank and file not aware because I talked to, to about three different firefighters around the pier 
literally is it coming out in their trucks and please, they were not aware of this plan. Please, let him finish the question. I think your question was good. I don't want to hear about you know, officials that are beholden to the mayor for their jobs, but I just want to know what was the thinking thought process to locate this facility so close to such a strategic asset of, New York, of the fire department of New York. What was the thought process? Not was, no, who was you know, the yes men involved in What was the thought process? I can mention, you know, we have a vice president of emergency management that meets with the city. They are fully aware of, of where it's located, right? In terms of the rank and file, we bring them to our learning center and we train them. We show them where our structures are, where our facilities are. Once it is built, we do go to local firehouses and we do give them training. So if the rank and file is not aware of it, uh, they, have a they have to communicate it down through their chain of command also, but they also come to our learning center and we do give them uh, training. I have no doubt about what you're saying there, that there's a learning center, et cetera, there's some thought around the decision having been made. I'm talking about the decision itself. What was the thought process that would locate this, mm -hmm. this pipeline so close to a strategic asset? The, de the decision-making thought process. Whose bright idea was that? <laughs> can, can you answer the question? Well, if you can't answer the question, that's fine. I understand. <laughs> okay. Ma Ma'am, do, do you have a question? I think you, you raised your hand. Um, yeah, I, I would like to know from Con Ed, I, Mr. Lito, maybe this isn't a, a question for you. I don't know if there are other Con Ed people in the room who could answer it, but it, it's about um, your product. It's about what goes through the pipeline and your customers. And how, how will, what will Con Ed do um, to assure its customers that it's selling them a safe, non-radioactive product, and if that's not the case, that it can prove it's safe, will Con Ed inform its customers of this potential risk? Like I mentioned before, the transportation of natural gas into our system is regulated by FERC. Okay, the gas that comes in, Con Edison does not purchase all the gas that comes into our system. We're the supplier of, of let's say, last resort. Okay, 50% of our gas is bought directly by the customers and brought into our system. Okay, so the transportation and the gas that's coming is regulated by FERC. How many of them have What if you find out it's dangerous? How do we know? If FERC deems that it's dangerous and they impose any regulations and rules, Con Edison will follow them. What if it's discovered and it's not through FERC? Ma'am, do you have a question? Yeah. Okay. Who, me? Mm -hmm. Denise. Hi, Denise. Uh, my question is directed to Spectra. Uh, it's good to see Ed and Mary Lee here so they can answer my question. In the true spirit, not in the bogus spirit of lack of transparency, which we have all heard too much of this evening. And, and an equal playing field. As some of us know, Jersey City is against the project. Jersey City turned down your 20 plus million benefits package. Madeline Wills at the Hudson Park Trust was forced by us to declare over $2 million as an easement present. How much money has been paid to the city of New York so that you can perform the project? Woo! So what we pay is the permits. Fees on permits that are No, standard. that's crap. You that's the answer to the, that's the answer. City, a New York benefits city, package we pay the permits. Of over $20 million. We can you list the permits, permits for us, please? Maybe they're some we're not aware of. Well, so we answer the question, you're DOT. not providing a benefits yeah. package to Jersey, I'm uh, sorry, to New York ask, City? This is our New York City, right? Manhattan, yeah, how much money Staten do you pay Island? Jersey City? You're not offering them a benefits package? Like we are paying the dollars? permits as we go. Street and opening. first answer that question. Are you or aren't you offering New York City a benefits package? There's no benefits package. The same way you are, okay, there's no benefits package. There's no benefits package. So list the permits what and how deal. much the permits are. Well, we told you, the, it's the I don't know if I can list all the actual cost of the permits. Then is the there a DOT? Excuse me, excuse me. Can I let, try let to let answer? Let him answer the question. <laughs> okay. So there's DOT. New York State. 
DOT, New York State DOT, New York City DOT. The mayor's broken. DOT. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you
hydraulic fracturing and are you using local people and how many people have you displaced from homes and or businesses? Nobody has been displaced from homes or businesses. 100% of the workforce is local. All of our well, workforce is local. City. Like one of any of the five boroughs? <laughs> well, Westchester, uh, I'm trying to think if anyone, there's a company from New Jersey uh, offhand that may be. Uh, yeah, Tri state area. Let's, you know, I don't know exactly who's actually the company where their home office is, but let's say the tri state area. All our companies are. Are local okay and in terms of the fracturing that is uh, a state issue we do not true we do not manufacture or produce gas that's my question is okay. con edison does con edison as a company <coughs> do they promote and do they support hydraulic fracturing we transport the gas that's, that's so it. in other words, gas has been transported. I think what I think what she wants to know is gas. is Spectre or is Con Ed take a position? On you transport it. That's all right. That's it. Okay, okay, there is no position. All right, Jim. So yes, yes, you do. Jim. Okay. First, I want to thank the chair and the committee. They've been very vigilant on this issue, and we should really realize that as community. <laughs> I've only been to one other community board meeting where there were police outside. Right. And that's yes. when Christine Quinn was supposed to appear at a, bill, a hospital hearing. Mm -hmm. She did not appear. It's very intimidating to walk into mm -hmm. a community mm -hmm. meeting exactly. and have four police officers. I only saw four, but I also saw one of those paddy wagons. <laughs> and we have our community affairs person walking oh, out the door now. <laughs> um, well, my question has to do, you know, I feel that you've all spun this in a way that most of us can't understand it, and I, I'm disappointed that both Spectra and Con Edison didn't take this opportunity to listen to the concerns of the community and speak directly to them in ways that we can understand. You, none of you did that. You all danced around it, and that's one of the problems. And this community, as you can see, is informed. I'm going to talk to you about being a senior and being a gay man in an area which has a lot of people with compromised immune systems. Mm -hmm. yes. right here. Right here. What happens as we get older, we are more vulnerable to many things. And if because of a, of a, of a health issue our immune systems are compromised, we are very concerned about questions about radon. <laughs> and you danced around the answers of that, and that is not a way to build a relationship with the community. So I say to the, com to the community board people, the committee, keep up this good work. <laughs> don't give up, don't give in, don't be bought off. I will tell you that there is not one elected official present tonight mm -hmm. that I can see. Mm -hmm. Not one from this neighborhood. This is the most, one of the most important issues we have. We have no hospital. If there was an explosion, the hospital we had was the pandemic emergency plan was there. The mayor, the city council, the speaker has not put another one in place. What happens if there's an explosion? We know they don't want one, but we also know that there have been across the spectrum pipelines urban and not urban mm -hmm. explosions mm -hmm. it just happens no he one has addressed the question of what happens when these wells go dry and this pipeline is no longer used as full of radon and you have one of that one woman raised that question please come prepared to speak frankly <laughs> with an informed community otherwise believe me we are who are here today but because our elected officials did not educate this community about what this pipeline was and what it's going to do, we've had to neighbor to neighbor to neighbor begin to let people know what the hell is going on next to this pipeline. My question is, my question is <laughs> what do you have to say to me as a person in his 70s who's very concerned about a weakened immune system and this, well, everything other than what you've said, every piece of information I've read, other than government 
reports have said this is dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's unhealthy. It's unhealthy for babies, it's unhealthy for seniors, and it's unhealthy for everyone in between. What do you say to me without saying, it's not your responsibility, we just transmit <laughs> I would like you to really address the concerns that you've heard articulated here by people that would be willing to have an efficient gas system, energy system, not based on fossil fuel, yeah. by the way. So could yeah. you please address on a human level some of the concerns that are being yeah. said? You are not Tom Dwayne and you are not Brad Heilman. Yeah. You are a lackey. Thank you, Excuse me. Jim, 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 Jim. 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 I'm sorry, I'm tired. They don't show up. None of them. Tell your boss to come. Tell your boss to get his ass down here. Just to clarify, if I could have everyone's just, attention, just please. Low, just Excuse, me. Calm down. Excuse me. Excuse me. He interrupted. Excuse me. There are representatives here from no, no, no. elected officials, okay? No, no. Uh, excuse me. And that is what Robert was trying to say. Okay, so, so that, that hey, excuse me. Excuse me. They are here, okay? Just so that the record is clear on that front. The officials are not here. I'm, I'm moving over. I'm moving over. I asked the question. I asked the question, and the elected officials represented did not allow the the, the, the Con Edison or Spectre to answer it. I asked you to please talk on human terms, not profit, not federal regulation, about how you can assure us, as one human being to another, that this is safe. Everything has told us it is not safe. Okay. And you have done nothing to convince me tonight that it is safe. Right. Thank you, Jim. Can, can you answer that question? Can someone answer that question? Or? <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. Again, I can appreciate the comments and everything that we've heard tonight and the concerns related to a natural gas pipeline and the fact that where we're, where we're building, we're currently building our facility. You know, we took a lot of time and effort in what we did and what we looked at in building the facility. But for me, from a personal standpoint, that's what you're asking about. How do I feel comfortable in what we're proposing to do and what we're really actually doing right now from Spectre Energy standpoint? And, and for me, it's because I have kids, I have family just like you do. Where do you live? Those individuals live in New Jersey. You put in a pipeline? I have three natural gas pipelines that are next to me. How close? My kids, I have uh, about 150 feet away. 42 inch, 36 inch, I even have an oil pipeline next to me. And the reason, and what I do, I have kids. And, and my kids read the papers, they're older now, they're in the college. You know, Dad, gee, this is what you're doing. Help me understand what's going on with projects, natural gas projects, and the and questions that are raised with that. And for me, from a personal perspective, if I wasn't comfortable and confident in what I do for a living, I wouldn't do this. If I wasn't confident that companies like Spectra Energy build their facilities safely, I couldn't do this. You know, there's, there, there's moral standpoints that we all need to have. And me personally, you know, it's the confidence in what companies like us do. Yeah. Are we going to move over? Ma'am, do you have a question? I'm looking right at you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I, I guess it's, it's gotten through that we are all concerned for our lives, essentially. That's what we are here for. And, and our children's lives. So um, I'm not going to ask you if you think it's safe. Uh, does Con Ed and or Spectra agree to be held accountable and pay restitution for damages and 100% remediation if radon is, is higher in higher than current microcuries is found to be present on our premises after Con Ed pipes Marcellus Glass gas to New York City in 2013. Who is prepared to be held accountable and to pay damages and restitution? All right. yep. <laughs> 
Uh, first of all, I think if you go back to where I ended up in the discussion of radon, the amount of radon that is coming into the home is infinitesimal. That's so not, that's not the question. Answer the question. Would you let me answer the question, You're please? not answering it. Would you let me answer it, please? And this is in case of. Is that a right. Yeah, in case of. I mean, have the question. Okay. So the point of the first question, if increased amounts come in, the extremely low level that's coming in and the level which causes harm is a huge gap. So increased amounts could come in. And if you're saying what happens to the pipes, the liability? No. No. What's, I, I guess what is the responsibility to us? You're a liar. No, look, she's asking whether or not if there is an explosion, who's going to pay for the restitution? No, 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 that's not that, that, well, hey, talking about restitution, right? Or the radiation. Right. The radiation. Okay. radiation. Yes, Damages. Restitution. You know, again, it, it depends on the cause of the incident. If, if a third no, if a third party hits our pipe and they were negligent, that's something they're responsible for. If we were knowingly, if we were knowingly, excuse me, sir, sir, you want to ask the question again? Let me, let me ask. Okay, okay, and then we'll get it straight. Okay. Does Con Ed agree to be held accountable and pay restitution for damages and 100% remediation if radon in higher than current microcuries, current microcuries, is found to be present on our premises after you pipe the Marcellus gas to New York City in 2013? Doesn't say we're sure it's going to happen. Doesn't say we're not sure it's going to happen. But if it should happen, who is responsible? And when well, you ask that question with respect to Con Ed, I guess I can answer it with respect to Spectrum. Okay. Spectrum I mean, is responsible. No. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> is that a no, sir? Con Ed is who, who is responsible? If you're introducing poison into the right. kitchen. <laughs> No, if, if we're knowingly doing that, I think... Uh -huh. I think uh -huh. Knowingly, knowingly, knowingly. Yeah, knowingly. Uh -huh. look, if you did look, look, right, look, right now, let's go back, and you may not agree with the government uh -huh. studies, but all the government studies are unanimous in that uh -huh. it is not the safe. Liar! 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 You have to answer the question, sir. Who's responsible? Who's responsible? That's the if there was something, If there was something dangerous, uh -huh. and if there were damages, you probably have recourse against everybody in the supply chain, which would be the suppliers of the gas, the deliverer of the gas, and the transporter of the gas. Is that in writing? That is, you can look state law, federal law. I mean, that's what's going to govern that. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Do you have another question? <laughs> yes. Um, you, you talked about some of the, some of the studies that have been done. Uh, is Con Ed prepared to pipe frack gas from Pennsylvania to New York City kitchens if you have not prepared and published a peer-reviewed study of whether this gas will indeed contain, contain radon levels that could increase deaths from lung cancer in New York City residents? Again, I won't speak for Con Ed. I'll speak for Spectra. We did conduct an independent study by a preeminent biophysicist. That's the results of those well testings were ratified subsequently and independently by the U.S. Geological Survey. So we feel we've done that. They're consistent with earlier EPA studies, earlier DOE studies. Again, all the science is consistent. Where are the wells located, please? Pennsylvania. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, sir. Have a little car. I think he answered the question. Yeah, I think he answered the question. Okay. answered the question. Okay. To the best of his ability. Okay. How about the question? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, I actually, it's more of a point of information than a question. Um, a week before Hurricane Sandy hit, I was participating in a seminar that dealt with um, new forms of energy. There was wind, solar, and we had a representative, an engineer from Con Ed, speaking to us at length. 
and the issue of fracking came up, and I asked specifically about the Spectre pipeline and the, the, the issue of radon. And um, several people in the room said, oh, we've heard that it's really just negligible, it's trace amounts. And this engineer from Con Ed actually said that it was their understanding from the information that they had read that in fact it was significantly greater than trace amounts and the people living in this community had tremendous, um, had, had serious um, reasons to be concerned. And I was shocked that this I will not say the name and I will not say where I was, but it was, I just, everybody in this room, including the lawyers, should know that. Do you have a question? Wow. No, I just think it's important for people to know this. Uh, of all of the issues surrounding fracking and are surrounding this pipeline, and there are many, but this radon one will go away. Um, so I have another question related to that. One uh, is that I recall that I've seen recently that there are about 3,000 wells active wells in Pennsylvania now. Someone correct me if you know the exact number or close to the exact number. How many wells were tested for radon by USGS or Spectre or EPA or anybody to come up with the results that you have referred to? I can I can just speak for Spectre. We we tested eight wells. Eight? eight. <laughs> That's correct. Eight in different parts, eight, 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 eight in different parts of the state. Excuse me, excuse me. Let him, please, let him answer the question. Why don't you help facilitate? I don't. I don't. I don't. This, this was a sam ramp sampling. We, we thought it was a fairly geographically representative sample. Again, USGS tested 11 wells in Pennsylvania. I don't know the location of all of those. Prior to that. DOE and EPA had tested, I think, in excess of 800 wells throughout Pennsylvania and the Marcellus region. Thank you. Um, Sir, I, you have a question? Yeah. You have indicated, this is for Con Ed and Spectre to follow. You've indicated that New York City is serviced by 10 uh, suppliers of gas. And that I, you know, I've done a little research on this, and the system is well supplied. There's really no need for this gas line, except for the possibility for a customer of Con Ed to purchase it, but not necessarily utilize it in within the five boroughs, but rather perhaps to ship it somewhere else. Hey, so the need for this actual pipeline isn't for the local economy, and perhaps there's a substantial underlying economic interest for both uh, Spectra and Con Ed as transmission uh, uh, servicers to have this pipeline, but for no other reason to service the community. Export. To export natural gas, right? Uh, why you would bring it into New York City is beyond me. Across okay. New York City. Well, this is coming across New York City. There is a permanent moratorium on LNG barges in New York Harbor. It's been in existence since the 70s. So in order to ship natural gas, which they always do, via liquefying it, you would have to put it in a barge, and there's a permanent moratorium by the US Coast Guard preventing that from happening. But there's more that happened to New England than this gas line, this gas pipeline is not for export. It's no export. Well, uh, I'm Stuckane. Excuse us, can you hear me? I'm Eileen Stuckane from The Villager. And I've done some research on radon. And uh, I want to ask the spectra. Man. Louder. 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 I want to ask the Spectrum man why, since there's such an issue of um, the radioactivity and radon, and the half life is about four days. Well, 3.8, almost four days. And if there were storage tanks built, that the gas from the Marcellus Shale, which will only take about 12 hours to get here, mm -hmm. and will not lose, the radon in the gas will not lose its half-life, 
and coming from the Marcella Shale. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, since it's the gas that we get from Texas and Louisiana takes uh, quite a bit more time to get here, so the radon level is much lower. Uh, the gas from the Marcellus Shale will get here in about 12 hours, so the radon levels will be higher. And I know the gas is going to be commingled, but still there will be gas coming from the Marcellus Shale. So um, since this problem, it seems to me, can be so easily rectified if there were just storage tanks built to hold the gas for a few days, and then it could be transported into the city where where the radon levels would be lower. The, I mean, the radioactivity and you know, would be lower. And even though it might be expensive to build storage tanks, wouldn't it be better for the health of the people to do that? Pardon me? Not the people living near the tanks. Well, there are storage tanks all over Linden, New Jersey. It's still yeah. 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 It's, it's all over. I mean, it, it just seems there are guests. The lawyer is going to answer a lot of solutions. If I, um, if, if I, I could answer, if I could answer that. Yeah. No, no. I am just asking if, if this is inevitable, <coughs> maybe it could be stored so it could be lowered. And I have something else to say. Um, I, I have... Um, I, I have spoken to the people at the uh, Geological Society who, who did test the wells, and um, they will not reveal which wells were tested. Right. They were brought to wells by representatives, hmm. and, um, and they tested certain wells, huh? Representatives of whom? They won't tell me. Yeah. They said they were brought to wells by representatives. Oh. And they are, and they tested the wells that they were told to test. Mm. Now we all know that some wells have lower radon levels than other wells. Yes. So um, I, I, I just think that in that the wells, they all have numbers, but the wells that were tested, maybe they, those numbers could be revealed. Lack of transparency. Thank you. With, with respect to USGS, I, I don't know which wells they tested. I can't speak to their testing methods. The wells we tested were identified in, in our report. Uh, they were chosen at random. Uh, they were chosen by wells that, pr that processed their gas, and they were produced, and we tested wells that didn't process their gas. So we wanted to get representative sampling both in how the gas was produced and, and in various geographic parts of the state. With respect to your first question, the half-life issue really doesn't come into play because the levels we're talking about are so low right now, it doesn't yes, re reduce the image of these. Just one moment. Any nuclear expert that has ever spoken on this issue says there is no safe level of radiation. Okay. Hey, let's let's stop in the front. There's, there's radon in this room right now. Right. <laughs> there's radon in the food we eat. Yep. There's radon in the water we drink. Well, that's 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 I know there's concern about calling natural gas natural gas, but radon is also a natural gas. So let's put let's put the issue in perspective. The levels are so low. Again, all the all the all the, the government reports and our independent study are consistent in is that there is no health risk. And I, I, I don't know how, what else I can say. Yeah, so. you know, uh, we, only, we only have enough time for a couple more questions, okay? No, no. ...of the Gansevoort Peninsula, <laughs> when it is probably the most dangerous place you can have because the fire department could be consumed if there's a problem. I'm wondering, it looks as if they were chosen for cost reasons to get the cheapest option possible. You could also have taken it to the, keep it still in community board two if necessary, take it to the south side of 14th street, just so it's still in our board and we're responsible for, for our decision on it. And then, you won't have the problem of having the fire department perhaps 
not no longer there when they are required to put out the fire. <laughs> it, it simply doesn't make sense when you have a much better possibility to take it to 14th Street, which would be about the same distance as taking it to Gansport. I would like to hear answer. I consider this to be <coughs> one uh, program, and I would like to hear from both, probably Spectra first. Were any other sites considered? Yeah, let's understand the question, why did we choose the Gansport Peninsula for, for the landfall, and did we look at anything else, and what considerations were taken into place? And yes, we looked at various other options as far as landfall uh, for the horizontal directional drill. And what we had to take into account is environmental impacts. We needed to take a look at where the landfall was going to be, the least disruptive uh, you know, to, uh, to the area. The other is constructability, and then actually the vicinity where uh, Con Ed would like to see the pipeline brought into uh, Manhattan. So we looked at other alternatives. The basis for choosing the, the Gansevoort Peninsula is number one, it was least disruptive you know, to the community. We're at, on the edge of the peninsula and we can construct across it. Number two is uh, when we looked at all the other alternatives, trying to find some place along the waterfront that was suitable, we couldn't find anything that had the type of space we would need to construct. Uh, and if we did, it would be extremely disruptive to the community. So we chose something uh, uh, out within the water. You know, as far as the location, vicinity of the fire department uh, that's on the, uh, the north end of it, we had several discussions with the city, with the police department and the fire department going through the alignment of the pipeline in relationship to the facility, explain to them how we're going to construct and how we operate and maintain our facility, and they were fine with that. Well, I believe it's quite clear that the fire department facility there, which is 24 hours uh, around the clock, is a major, major concern. Uh, the space up near 14th Street is far more open, much more space, and you could take it underneath it would cost maybe more, but it would be a lot safer for the community, especially if the prevailing wind carried it across the highway. Did you consider the area which is quite open? I don't know of any residential uh, facility right close to it, as there is across the street from the place that you chose, as well as the new museum that's being constructed. We looked at several alternatives. All of those are defined in the FEIS and resource report number 10, which is the alternative analysis. And so we looked at several alternatives. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, also did their own assessment. And based upon their assessment, where we cited the pipeline, uh, making that landfall was uh, uh, the area they had conferred with as well. Uh, you, you mentioned in one of the last meetings that you attended here, that you were having problems working out a system for bringing the pipeline up at the angle. State law states that it should be very carefully considered. It also states that there should be no identification in case of a terrorist attack. Uh, but you've said that there would be identifications all the way along and even on the sidewalks and so forth so that someone could respond to it. Is that still your position? Yes. You yes, would the pipeline, identify them. The pipeline will be marked and you know the question related to the angle the, probably yeah, the last okay. time that we were here is the question was asked of did we ever consider making landfall on the uh, east side of 9A and the issue there was the angles <laughs> and all the, uh, the process of being able to get the horizontal directional drill. That's why it was moved out to the edge. Of How long <laughs> will it take to dig your way across the highway? Whereas if you would take it further north and it might require freeze technology or whatever, but you could be low enough that you could build the structure without interfering with the highway and putting these steel plates in place to
during the winter time when there could be ice over and create hazards for the traffic. The pipe has already been installed in 9A. If that's going to let have already installed it. Process. Well, if there's a if it's a serious mistake, then it could be corrected. Yeah, I have another area that I would like oh, to oh, ask oh, about. You know what? You know what? Hold on. Which we, all we have is a few more minutes. Okay. We, we are we were granted the permission to use this school in this room. Okay. We don't have all night. Okay. Our committee has to meet after it's done, and we all have to be out of here. Okay. So. We can't possibly get all the questions. We can't. That's okay, not so what you said before. I, no, that is not what you said before. it's Everybody because now everybody's change. raising their hands. I moved over, and I'm, yeah, no. I'm, I've been moving That's over, and now we got more questions over here. No, I'm going to go to the lady, but we have limited amount of time. Let, 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 me ask, of time. let me ask one question. Could, could, the, the, community, no, could the community board email a list of questions to both units? And have them answer it. Absolutely. If, that's a very good idea. And that's what I tried to get at, at, at the earlier part of the meeting. If you have questions, you can email no. them. No, no, we've been doing that. No, you can, if you wish, email them. You and can, they if you wish, email them to the community board. Okay? okay. And, they will and, and we will, as your conduit, try to get responses to those questions. Okay? So, yes, the answer is yes. Okay? Okay. Uh, speaking universally, renewables are the answer. <laughs> With horizontal slick water fracturing, horizontal fracturing, we all know that from extraction to delivery, quote unquote natural gas and oxymoron, is more greenhouse gas producing than a CO2. We did not ask for this. This was foisted upon us. Right. Knowing what we know about global warming and putting fossil fuels into the atmosphere to continue to do so is tantamount to suicide. <laughs> right. <laughs> no hospital. Uh, a question actually that I have is, um, I haven't looked at all the figures on, on all parts of this question, but there seems to be a gap between demand and what this will supply. Uh -huh. yes. A huge gap. And the set, third question <coughs> and point I would like to make is, how can we stop this? Right. Can anyone answer the question, how can we stop this? Because <laughs> 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 I think everybody in the room wants to know that. Very good. Can this be stopped? I mean, I, 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 mean, I do. But I mean, we're not going to be able to stop it tonight. Okay. We want to stop. I understand. Do, do, do you have a do you have a question? No, seriously. That, There's a you've lawsuit. You've heard everybody here. There is a lawsuit. You've heard. That's why we're here tonight. Okay. That's why we're here. Do you have like do you have a question? Seriously, because there, there's another lady right here that I bet okay. you. Okay. The two questions were the, the discrepancy between the demand and the supply was one, and the second is a serious question: is how we can stop it. Two questions. Yeah. About the demand. Supply and demand. The 20-year forecast clearly indicates that the use of natural gas in the city will clearly uh, utilize the supply. It's the gas, not natural gas. Second question. Okay. About stopping it? Okay. Do you want, you want to add? You don't think you got your question answered? No. That's fine. Okay. 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 Yeah, um, I'm Donna Scopper, Senior Minister at Judson Memorial Church. I yeah. yeah. don't deal in issues of unnatural gas or natural gas, uh, but I do deal almost every day with marital problems and family problems and people who have lost their way. And what I observe here and it will turn into a question, but more to the community board than even to those who give us the sources of our energy, is my question is, what's negotiable? What level of trust is possible after all that's happened in this city? I mean, you hear the hurt. I know you do, because you're family people. You hear the mistrust, the hurt, the broken promises, the stuff that doesn't work, the things that blow up, the terrorists that come through. And I, I just feel the fear so much. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's helping our community 
negotiate with those who provide us energy, I might just say editorially, somewhat unfairly, uh, and without um, respect, and seem to make a lot of money on it, while what we get is nightmares. So I am not, I am concerned about the injustice, but I'm more concerned about the tone of the conversation and the mistrust and the, uh, it's like people aren't needing each other. You do give us energy, that's good. We pay a lot for it. We're already in a lawsuit. I mean, it feels like a bad marriage. So my uh, concern here is always in community board meetings in New York City, where the trust seems to have gone away like 20, 30, 40 years ago. Was, was it Robert Moses who did us wrong? I don't know who did us wrong. <laughs> But somehow we have to get through it, <coughs> over it. So I want to know what is negotiable. And that is a question I have for my electeds and my community board representatives. Can you work to find what is negotiable here? Thank you, Tom Duane's representative, for coming. And I understand why people don't want to come to these meetings. You know? <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you, Pastor. People should come, the elected officials should come where the community is, okay. and that's your yeah, elected yeah, officials. Yeah. We should yeah. stop yeah. each other. Is my Please point. don't make excuses for them. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. is, yeah. we need yeah. to yeah. stop leaving yeah. yeah. hard-working yeah. people yeah. who are yeah. trying to restore yeah. trust. Yeah. And so yeah. I ask the community yeah. board to find a way to negotiate something. With the people who are providing the energy. community law has no power. Okay. And, 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 and why are you waiting for everyone? They were rightly against it, but they had no power. We have time for one more question. Let's send answers. Do you have a question? Yes. yes. Can I ask two questions? Yeah. You can yes. do two parts. Okay. Yes. They're both for Con Ed. Um, is it Mr. Lito? Yes. Um, uh, so you're pretty confident about I did, I the rate on your show, please? Speak up, please. Um, EPA has designated two Pico Furies as the safe level for radon. There is no actually safe level. Since you're so confident about it, will you guarantee a two, two Pico Curie level of gas delivered to residents? And um, <coughs> in the EIS, a big deal was made. In fact, the whole point of why FERC allows pipelines to come in is to lower rates for ratepayers. Mm -hmm. But in fact, uh, Con Ed is already scheduled for an a October two, uh, 12, 2013 rate increase. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that? Right now, there is no rate increase. Uh, we didn't go in for a rate increase. Right. It's, on the, it's on your site. I saw it. And it's, and it's been requested. It's been requested. <laughs> <laughs> If, oh, yeah, if, oh, yeah. if this pipeline is supposed to lower, if this pipeline goes into effect in November 2013, that should mean our rates should be lower. Yeah. It's not raised. The commodity cost of natural gas, right, is what gets transported to the customer. Con Edison does not make money on the, tran on the commodity price, okay? <coughs> we make money on transporting the gas. Okay, so by having access to multiple supplies through multiple suppliers, the customers are able to purchase gas, hopefully at a reasonable cost that is uh, somewhat flat going forward. We cannot control the cost of the gas. Why is the rate going up then? The rate is the uh, transportation cost of, uh, of the commodity, not on the commodity itself. So it seems to me that we're paying for this pipeline. Yeah. So you're yeah. paying spectra Could you answer much? the question about the pico curie? Will you guarantee a two pico curie level of delivered gas? Like I mentioned before about the gas, Con Edison only transports the gas. The transportation of gas is regulated by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Will you guarantee it? Will you guarantee it? To what we are obligated to transport it. If FERC decides or imposes regulations or rules, Con Edison will follow them. All right. Thank, thank you, everyone.